Guys, give it up for Andrea, your wonderful host. She has been brilliant. How's everybody doing? Are you all right? Yeah. I'm in a very good mood because I'm wearing my recently arrived Long Johns. <laughs> I'm at that age now, 35. Long Johns, yes, please. Um, but uh, I think it's basically because I don't like winter. I don't like the winter very much. Me and my ancestors were not built for this fucking weather. <laughs> uh, 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 during the summer, I went to watch cricket. Any fans of cricket in? Yeah. <laughs> 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 One solitary, yeah, at the front. I went to watch England beat Pakistan during the World Cup. Very happy to be there. Proud Englishman, born to a Pakistani father. And I said, Ishan, you know, you've grown up with the age-old tradition of chanting at football matches. Why don't you introduce a chant to this match that bridges this cultural gap between these two distinct parts of your identity? And guys, I'd love it if you join me on the chant, okay? Uh, you might be familiar with the tune. The tune goes as follows. <coughs> cool. Uh, yeah. And then you go. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. So let's see how liberal you really are. <laughs> I'm going to count down to three. <laughs> I want you to say Allahu Akbar first and then do the clap. Ready? One, two, three. Akbar. It didn't go that well at Lord's. Got escorted off the premises. <laughs> now, most of you, well done. You did it for me. Thank you. Well done. But some of you racists didn't. What? <laughs> And I get it, you were, like, you were nervous, you're like, Ishan, come on, there's no way I'm going to say Allahu Akbar. You know full well, it means kill the white man. <laughs> it doesn't. Allahu Akbar simply means God is great. Muslims will say this in all sorts of situations, but it's not your fault. There's a lot of tension around Muslim phrases, not least because of the events that happen. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> there is, there's some tension, right? There's some tension. Events like uh, last week add to the tension, but also, over the years, there's been this general subliminal view that makes people nervous about shit like this. Like, you might hear this announcement on trains. It goes, see it, say it, sorted. You heard this? Now, for those of you that haven't, see it, say it, sorted, announcement on trains, which basically means if you see something suspicious, call the British Transport Police. But we all know what they really mean by suspicious. <laughs> if you see a brown bloke <laughs> with a rucksack, <laughs> give us a fucking call, right? <laughs> I, think it's, I don't like seeing it say it's sorted because for a start, it just raises fear and suspicion of a group of people I don't think we need to be afraid of. Second, it doesn't get to the heart of the issue of what they want us to do, which is essentially racial profiling. And third and most importantly, see it, say it, sorted doesn't fucking rhyme. <laughs> now I'm a linguist, this upset me. I said, right, I want to come up with some alternative options, take it to the people, see what they like, send it to the authorities, and hopefully they change it. So I've come up with two options to replace see it, say it, sorted. Tell me which one you prefer, okay? Option number one. Seen a muzo? If so, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a few of you liked it, a few of you liked it, okay. Um, what about this one? <clears throat> Don't be wacky, reporter. <laughs> if you think it, you're racist. You thought of the word. You thought it, you're racist. <laughs> if you think it, you're racist. <laughs> I made you think of the word. <laughs> you Guardian reading twats. I made you think of it. But the P word's an interesting one. The P word's an interesting one. I don't think it has the same kind of impact in modern British discourse as, say, the N word does. Perhaps rightly so. Last year, I was out at a party in Shoreditch, because I'm doing all right. And these, two <laughs> and these two girls walked down the stairs, right? One of them had a birthday sash on. I said, happy birthday. She says, oh, thanks, babe. Came over, gave me a kiss on either cheek, tickled my balls. <laughs> She's from Essex, you know how it is, right? <laughs> and then a friend came down, and then this guy came down who wasn't best pleased about the fact that I was talking to these girls, right? Because he came down, looked at the girls, looked at me, looked back at the girls, and then said, what are you doing talking to this packy? Now, it was three in the morning. I'd not heard that word used against me since 1999 when my dad called me one. <laughs> so I was like, fucking hell, this is retro racism, right? <laughs> but before I could react, the girl with the birthday sash grabbed him by the throat. Because hell hath no fury like a white girl scorned on behalf of someone else. <laughs> <laughs> grabbed him by the throat, her friend started crying and hugging me. I was like, thank God for racism, I'm getting laid. <laughs> Good outcome for me. Turns out she doesn't sleep with brown men. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. 
What I was going to tell you to add to this kind of colourful concoction, guys, I also happen uh, to be a deaf person. That's my hearing aid. Um, <laughs> don't laugh, it's a disability, but there you go. <laughs> um, which means um, when I go for a job interview, I can see an HR manager in the corner going, <gasps> tick, tick, tick. <laughs> <laughs> Please be gay, please be gay, please be gay. <laughs> Ridiculous! Right? But they're not the only ones that do weird shit when they find out I'm deaf. The other day I was walking down the road, this guy walked past me, noticed my hearing aid, this is all he yelled out. Oi! Bluetooth wanker! <laughs> it's not a Bluetooth earpiece. Or well, the other one I get is, um, oh, well, Sean, it's so interesting that you're deaf because I think I'm actually a bit deaf too. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with this information? <laughs> And you can't do that with any other disability, right? You can't go up to someone in a wheelchair and say, mate, when I drink too much, my legs feel a bit wobbly as well. You can't. <laughs> Weird shit to say. <laughs> but also, of all the disabilities, like, it is actually a disability. Deafness is an actual disability. It's because we're a hearing aid. It makes, enables me to hear people. But it's a shit disability. Like, I don't get the same benefits as all the other disabled people. Like, I can't, I can't enter the Paralympics, can I? There's blind football, wheelchair basketball. A deaf race would be a line of men just waiting to start. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not all bad, man. I am, um, uh, because of my deafness, I'm actually eligible to a disabled person's rail card. <laughs> Gets me a third off rail travel, third off TFL as well, which surprised me. And so when I got it, I grew in self-confidence. I was like, oh my God, I get a third off rail travel. Being disabled is fucking sick. I'm going to go the whole hog. I'm going to get myself a fucking blue badge, mate. <laughs> so I walked into the local council office, a bit too ably. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in, and the guy behind the counter took one look at me. He was like, ah, yes. I was like, huh? Wow. This guy's so good at his job. He took one look at me. He was like, yeah, disabled. Come. <laughs> I was like, damn, great. I, I like it on brand. So he beckons me over. Uh, and he says, sit down. So I take a seat, and he pulls out a form. And on the form, you have to tick the reason why you're giving someone a blue badge, right? Uh, and he ticks off, weight-related mobility issues. <laughs> Fuck off, mate! <laughs> so I left the office after that. But, uh, you, know, I, I use, I, you know, I use these characteristics to my advantage, man. I use these characteristics to my advantage. I got myself a job in an office. Now, if any of you have worked in an office environment, uh, there's a very high likelihood you work with special people that you might affectionately call twats. <laughs> Right. Now, I used to work in banking, so I was swimming in an ocean of these fuckers. And one of these twats was a girl called Sarah. Always a bloody Sarah. <laughs> Sarah goes on a beach holiday, absolutely fine. She comes back from this holiday with the glow of someone who obviously had a wonderful time. But what she did that I didn't appreciate, right, was sat at my desk. She came up to me. She put her arm out and started comparing her tan. As she did this, she said, I'm nearly there. I said, Sarah, what the fuck are you playing at? That's weird, because you are a black lady. <laughs> so uh, as some of you probably gathered from the chant that you did for me, uh, I was raised a Muslim. I was raised a Muslim. Uh, it's all right. My hearing aid picks up the awkward silence. <laughs> I've got quite a Muslim name, Ishan Akbar. Akbar, you would have heard from such things as executions. Or the call to prayer. Akbar actually means the greatest, which is pretty cool. Akbar means the greatest. And Ishan, Ishan actually means not. <laughs> <laughs> mean joke from my parents there. So I was raised a Muslim, but the truth is, I stopped practicing Islam uh, a few years ago because I went on this journey of self discovery, and, uh, and that journey led me to discover bacon. Uh, <laughs> oh, which is some good shit you white guys are packing. Fucking hell. <laughs> Have you had frazzles? Fuck me! <laughs> and then I discovered alcohol, right? I was like, whoa! Hashtag, I ain't no Muslim bruv, right? <laughs> I think it's when you come from the kind of gastronomic history that I come from, my dad's from Pakistan, my mom's from Bangladesh, this, and then you add bacon to the mix, this baby gets created, right? And I, this came to the fore a couple of months ago, because I did a gig in a place called Seven Oaks in Kent. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know Seven Oaks in Kent, it's quite hilly and racist. 
So I did this gig and I had to climb from the station to the venue. It was at the top of a hill, right? So I climbed this hill, took about five days. Um, <laughs> I got to the venue and guys, I discovered something I did not know existed. I suffer from under -move sweat. <laughs> right, I had these perfect moon crescents forming <laughs> just here. It was like a sign from Islam telling me to come back. <laughs> After that gig, right, this guy came up to me, he's opening gambit, no word of lie, opening gambit. I like you, not like the rest of them. Good start. <laughs> I like you, not like the rest of them. You should talk to your people <sighs> and tell them to be more like you. I was like, mate, we don't have a WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> but I've clocked uh, a couple of Asian people in the audience, and I just want to tell you. We fucking do have a WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember taking the train to that gig, train centre, bring out the worst of most of us, but it also brings out some of the best bit of passive aggressiveness I've ever seen. Right? I was on a packed rush hour train on my way to the gig. When I say packed, you know what I mean? Face in armpits, packed. Babies, stacked on shelves, packed. <laughs> Just loads of babies on shelves, right? <laughs> So on the train, the train pulls into the station. Our faces were pressed up against the door windows, right? <laughs> Doors open. There's a lady stood on the platform who can clearly see that the train has reached its maximum <laughs> capacity. Yet she insisted and thought it'd be helpful to say the following words. Can you move down, please? <laughs> One guy had clearly had enough. He just stared at her directly in the eyes and just went, What a legend! <laughs> That's the thing, you see, we're the wonderful people on public transport. I'll be honest, I'm a born and bred Londoner. Most of the characters tend to piss me off. But the group that pissed me off the most have got to be parents of toddlers. Do you have any parents of toddlers in tonight? Give me a cheer. Liars, right? <laughs> I'll tell you why, because parents of toddlers nowadays, they feel the need to show that they love their child when they're in public. Well, I'll give you an example. They were like this, they were like, um, <clears throat> Oscar, we're on a train. Did you bring your bag with you today, darling? I know there are lots of people on the train, aren't there? What's that? You want to press the button even though don't worry about them? How about I read you a story first? Yeah, Oscar? I love you, Oscar. I love you, Oscar. I really love you, Oscar. Fuck off. <laughs> I understand and assume that you love your child, right? I don't need to see this performance parenting. Now, I don't have any children. I've got a little nephew. When I get my nephew along, I think to myself, I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to be a complete dick in public. So I get my nephew, I sit him down, I say, Hello, Ali. We're on a train. Did you bring a rucksack with you today? <laughs> I know there are lots of people on the train, aren't there? What's that? You want to press the button, do you? How about reading a story first? How's only one god and Muhammad is his prophet? Oh. Uh. All the parents shut the fuck up then, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I love being brown. You can get away with that kind of shit. <laughs> I did that joke at, the gig, at this gig once, and this young Muslim man came up to me after the gig, and he complained to me that he thought that joke was offensive to Muslims. Now, this was awkward, because I was having my post-gig beer at the same time. I don't want to have this conversation right now. <laughs> but also, that's not a debate I want to get involved with. I don't want a small section of the Muslim community misinterpreting my message. Because that would effectively turn me into the Quran. <laughs> that's a really clever fucking joke. <laughs> and now you're all shitting yourselves. <laughs> Like, come on, mate, we've come to enjoy some comedy. You can't go around dropping Q-bombs or K-bombs, however you spell it. Stop saying bombs, Ishan, right? <laughs> and I get it. I understand your nervousness, but I look, I think, I think it's important. I think it's important that jokes about Islam, the Muslim community, all that religion, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's important we make those jokes because it's the only way we can build communities. It's the only way we can build bridges because those bridges have literally been blown up by ISIS. <laughs> And I take it upon myself to do this, man. You know, my show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival last year was called Profit Like It's Hot. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, 
But it won't surprise you to know, man, I get in trouble for the kind of, like, the jokes I make. Um, in the time I've been doing comedy, um, which is five and a half years, I've had six death threats. Legend! <laughs> When I tell my friends and family this, I'm like, guys, I've had these death threats. They say, you shall not, you're afraid. I say, of course I'm not afraid for a start. These people give me death threats of fucking bellends. <laughs> also, what they didn't seem to realise, if they kill me for doing something I love, which is stand-up comedy, they're basically martyring me. So, I get all the virgins! <laughs> <laughs> now, some of you may know, some Muslim terrorists justify the atrocities they commit by saying they're rewarded in heaven with 72 virgins. Now... Straight men in the audience, I don't know about you, but 72 virgins does not sound like a reward. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of painful admin, I'll be honest. <laughs> I struggle to get an erection after a three and a half hour FIFA playing session, right? You're expecting me to blow myself up and then muster the energy to get an erection. At most, I'm getting a semi, quite an ordeal, right? <laughs> I like trying to get a portobello mushroom through a keyhole. I've got to do this 72 times. It's a bad experience for her, it's a bad experience for me, and then she follows me around heaven saying, you're my first, I love you, fuck off. <laughs> and let's extend the logic. If 72 virgins really is the reward you get in heaven for committing a terrorist atrocity, you're better off being a female, straight female terrorist. Because right? think about it, straight female terrorist, blow yourself up, get to the pearly gates, 72 boy virgins, never seen a thing in their life, all you have to do is go up to each of them and go, there's a boob, next. <laughs> And they say Islam doesn't support women. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got to go in a minute, guys. I've had a lovely time. Uh, oh, that's very sweet. Um, I hope you have enjoyed some, if not all, of my stuff. Um, if you haven't, look, that's absolutely fine. Comedy is inherently subjective. I'm still getting paid. <laughs> uh, and my name is Ramesh Ranganathan. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Honestly, it's so annoying. I've done some stuff recently, got me a bit more exposure on all sorts of weird and wonderful things. People are mean online, they're like, oh my god, that Ishan Akbar looks like Ramesh has had his lazy eye fixed. <laughs> oh my god, that Ishan Akbar looks like a fat Ramesh Ranganathan. I'm like, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. How fat do you have to be to be a fat version of a fat person? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Fuck off! Um, but if you have enjoyed my stuff, find me on social media. Uh, my name is Ishan Akbar, uh, but a lot of people struggle to spell that name. So on Twitter and Instagram, I'm called Michael Packintyre. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy reading. Well, I'm Ishan. All the very best. Good night. <laughs>